Francisco, and um, I, I read the script, and uh, and I liked it very much. I, I thought it was, it was really good. And then at some point, I found out that Roddy was going to be playing Peter Vincent, and for me, that was like, oh, this is perfect. And uh, and so that was a, a huge thrill for me. I'd grown up likewise watching Night Gallery and Planet of the Apes and all that stuff. Roddy had just finished a movie I wrote called Class of 84. Yes. And he's absolutely Woo! wonderful in that. And he brings you to tears. And I, I, I knew that he could have a chance of getting the pathos in Peter Vincent. Yeah. And, and he did. Uh, yeah, that's the thing about Roddy is all of his characters were they were sort of maybe on a dark trajectory, but he managed to find this real warmth, you know, heartfelt performance uh, inside of him. So he's perfect. He's perfect for the role. Excuse me. He was the loveliest man. And this one, this one, this one, this one. Uh, we, were, <laughs> we were all just these, you know, young actors just starting our careers. And here was Roddy McDowell and Chris Sarandon as well. But Roddy was an icon already in, in Hollywood. And he met each of us on equal ground. And nothing makes you feel safer as a young actor than to have someone of such stature greet you and work with you as if we are equals. And that's the thing I think I was uh, struck by the most. He was the most humble and generous and kind, uh, funny, self-deprecating, and the irony is, is he knew he was kind of a B actor, right, Tom? I mean, he knew that he, he knew every A-list, he knew everyone in Hollywood. But he also never quite made it to that, you know, complete peak. And even though he's beloved. And so here he was playing a sort of B actor. And I think it was a rich experience because it was so personal for him. And he was just so personal to all of us, so. Special man. Yeah, he, um, I, I just, when I first heard that he was going to be in it, it was like, I mean, I remember seeing him at the drive in with my family in Planet of the Apes, and I'm like, wow, I'm going to be working with this guy. And it just, it, 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 it was really, really special. And, um, you know, he added so much integrity to the mix, you know, uh, he, um, and actually working with him, it, it, I, 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 I wasn't starstruck, you know, it was like he was, like Amanda said, he was just an equal actor. Um, we, uh, we got along pretty well, for the most part. Let's hear it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, it just, um, it, it was so much fun be, being with this guy. He was, he was really, really special. Didn't like it. No, <laughs> he, was, he was a great guy. Uh, I didn't work with him that much, uh, but I do remember in, in, when you're doing, when you're shooting a movie, the actors spend so much time sitting around waiting for the, the camera to get uh, to the right shot, the lighting and everything like that. So there's tons of time. You sit around so much more than you actually act. But I remember Roddy never went to his trailer. He never, he sat with us and he would tell stories about Hollywood. And honestly, it was one of the most thrilling things I can remember, just listening to him tell these stories. And I knew they were true. And I and they were, some of them were a little, they were really interesting. Uh, but he was just, he was a great man. And he, when he was on the set acting with us, he gave more, he gave as much or more than any of us. And he was terrific. He stayed for off camera lines too, didn't he? Yes, he did. He stayed for off camera lines. And a lot of actors do not do that. I have one Roddy story. Uh, like Jonathan, I didn't work with him too closely either. The only scene I worked with him really directly was the scene in which you transform back from a wolf into a, a young boy, right? Remember that? Yeah, yeah, but that was disaster. Yeah. You vaguely remember I still that? Still have nightmares. Well, what happened was uh, it was meant to be a four-person makeup job that I told the producers and the director we should probably call him Tom. It would take 12 hours, which is an outrageous thing. You mean you put this guy in makeup for 12 hours and he's going to shoot another six? It would take three hours to get him out of it. The poor bastard. But what happened is one of my artists didn't show up. And so then suddenly it took 18 hours to do the makeup, just to do the makeup. And so the producers were incensed. The director, we should call him Tom, was kind of volcanically enraged about it. <laughs> Steven, he, had, he, had nothing, he couldn't say anything because he just put glowing arrow and painting. You, you 
gave me something. Uh, Don't start with that. Yeah. Don't start with that. <laughs> I accidentally put glue in his mouth. We're talking about another story. Uh, but but uh, so all these other people were kind of cool about it. But but Roddy thought it was funny because he'd been around the block, you know, one more time in my Yes, and I did accidentally put glue in your mouth, <laughs> like a Three Stooges routine. <laughs> Tom, I know before we spoke about um, the fact that when you were rehearsing Fright Nights, you guys treated this very much sort of like a play, where you guys would get together and sort of stage things out and everything like that. Can you talk about using that approach? And for the actors, can you guys talk about how much that benefited the performances because 